we're looking at lasting relief. I think it, for me, it's that um, it's sort of a neutrality, but neutrality is still a position. So it's not neutrality, but it maybe that's maybe the word that's closest we get. <clears throat> the relief is from like the pushing and pulling of the head. From the like grabbing or the aversion or the moving away from from whatever the head is trying to do, you know. Like in my own life, I feel like I've probably been an addict from, oh, I don't know, maybe from the age of eight or nine. The first addiction there was the drumming. I started drumming when I was really young and I got, I got good at that. And then at some point, the drumming took over from like the sports and I really was addicted to drumming because I was drumming like eight, nine hours a day probably. And down the road that ended me, that ended up causing me a lot of trouble because I actually injured myself. And that the time when I got the injury and I had to stop drumming and the type of drumming that I was doing, that was probably my first visitation with like depression, real depression. But the first thing that I clamped on to really hard was drumming and the identity of them being the drummer, which was like elementary school, junior high, high school. By the time I finished high school, I had been drumming so much and I was so attached to the idea of being the best drummer in the world or getting to this place where I was going to get through this vessel. In hindsight, now looking back, it was because drumming got me out away from the, the, the incessant movement of the head, the, the swinging of the head. Yeah, so then I got injured and I had to stop drumming in that way. So immediately, when I think back, it's like immediately my head was, I was really depressed because I couldn't drum anymore because it was sort of like my place of salvation. You know, as my parents divorced and then everything else went on in life, it's like that became the place where I could like chill was in the drumming. It got me away from the, the incessant noise in the head. So then I got injured and then right away, I, like when I recall, I can see my head going like, okay, what am I going to, how am I going to pick up an identity? Yeah. So then it went to DJing and electronic music. And then I played that game for about 10 years. And then the drumming came back in to the electronic music. It's music has always been great relief for me, but it, it, it has also become a substance in a way a substance to get really addicted to, to kind of black out whatever was going on in the head. Yeah. So it's very interesting because the head, it's craving for identity and maybe meaning or a, it, it's like point in the world. It's like on Google Maps, like the little red dot. It's like identity is going to give me that drummer, musician, this, this, this. Yeah, It's craving and, and always shooting forward towards getting that. But at the same time, it's trying to get away from the doubt, the shame, the depression, the anxiety, whatever else is going on. So there's this going towards and always trying to grapple or sorry, get. And then there's always an aversion to this other side of it, of the depression and the anxiety and things. This is like the pushing and pulling that I lived in. yeah. And then I started drinking, of course. <laughs> and this was the great... This was the great, what I thought to be the great fix, the great escape was through the booze. Because I'm still addicted to work, I'm still addicted to music, I'm addicted to money, and the money's coming from the music. And I'm trying to avoid the depression and the anxiety and the doubt and this seeming like hole in my life that I cannot fill, which is why I'm constantly pushing for identity with things. And so I'm driving that way and I'm trying to avoid that way. Is this pulling? It's like, that's kind of what it feels like, I think. It's like this, it's like you're taking your experience of life and you're like slowly ripping it apart two ways. I'm trying to get and I'm trying to get away from. Both of those movements are of the head. They're of the self, of taking myself to be the one that's trying to get and the one that's trying to get away from and the one who has the depression or the shame or whatever that is. 
So that was the experience. And then alcohol, you throw alcohol in there, and now I'm addicted to alcohol, of course, because that gets me away from the pole. That gets me away from the pole. But the alcohol, of course, is not sustainable over time. And I do a bunch of crazy shit when I'm drunk. You know? So it's misleading me. Now, the, the root of the whole thing is the self-centeredness. But when I'm in it, I don't see it. I didn't, there was, that wasn't even a concept at this point in my life. Yeah. It was just trying to get more and stay away from that. So that then the relief now, obviously it doesn't come through the booze. I mean, it kind of does in a way, like drinking does work, but it's very temporary. And then it adds on a whole other layer of issues, which is whatever crazy shit I'm going to do when I'm drinking which is uh, a lot of wild stuff, and then I'm drinking a lot. So that compounds over time. And so there's this living as that for a long time and then adding in booze. It's just like, uh, it does get, it got me to the point where like it, it got so unbearable that death was the only real option. Yeah. It's just like killing myself because I'm living as that pulling. I'm living as the one chasing and I'm living as the one trying to get away from. And living as that pulling is like un it's unbearable. You don't have to be an addict either to, to feel that. I feel like that's a very common experience if we're living as the self. We're living as that pulling. Um, so that's pretty much what happened, yeah? And it got to a point then where the drinking just got more and more because I needed more re relief that I thought I was getting from the booze, but I wasn't getting it. So then it was either kill myself or try to get out of it some other way. And AA was the way that worked eventually. Because Alcoholics Anonymous was the first thing that was looking at the problem, which was me. Yeah. It was the first time I had heard any concepts about, uh, you know, that the self had failed us or that it wasn't reliable or that the, like the mirror had turned a little bit to, to start looking at what, was actually going on in that play. <laughs> yeah. The first addiction, though, that roots all of this is the idea that I am, that I am that self, that I am the mental movement that's trying to get the identity, and I am also the one who's in depression, so needs to get out of it. That's the first, that's the primary thing. I, I would have never seen that without 12-step recovery, obviously. Because when you're deep in it, there's no way you're going to get out of it like that. It's like, they say this is the sudden path or whatever, but it takes time. <laughs> it's like there is a process. Yeah. <laughs> so that was always like what was going on in my experience and in my life. So the ultimate relief from that push and pull then is this place of neutrality. Now, neutrality is still a place. It's like the head isn't going to get that neutrality. It's like if the head was to say, uh, well, I just don't care. I'm neutral. Well, not caring is a position. Yeah. <laughs> Beingness is no position. It's not like a dot on a map which is what the head is always trying to get. It's trying to get at some identity. It's trying to like place itself somewhere because it doesn't inherently exist. There's just movement of thought that's constantly suggesting you're the thinker, you're the thinker, you're the one there, yeah? You're the J, you are the body. Uh -huh. It's constantly doing that because it's there is no hub to the wheel. There is no self. So it has to constantly be reiterating And it's that, that running that causes us no neutrality. There's, <clears throat> the head is not going to get into a place of positionlessness. It's not going to be able to do it because it's dual. 
So even saying, I don't have a position, is a position. <laughs> You're not getting out of it as language or as the self or as the head. It's just not going to happen, which is fine. We don't have to try to destroy the mental movement. We just need to see that we're not it. And when you look in hindsight, you can see that the head is doing a lot of stuff on its own. It's like your heart beats, but you're not beating your heart. Yeah, when you're walking somewhere, you're not like walking. Walking's happening. But when it comes to the mental movement, we seem to claim it and say, no, that's mine. Because the head is talking to you, let's say, in your language. Yeah, or seemingly in the language that you know. It's talking to you as you, but it's not really you. It's just that self-referential movement that's happening. But when you look into it, it's just operating. Does like does it really feel like you're firing all the thoughts that you're actually firing? Do we really need all of the thoughts that are happening? No way. We need we can operate on way less thinking, way less thinking. Yeah. So that's really where the that's where we get the peace from the pushing and pulling that I'm talking about. From the one trying to get and the one trying to get away from. It comes from identifying with the mental movement, you see? Because it's only the mental movement that's trying to get and trying to get away from. It's like, it's, this is why it's so important just to see that you're not that mental movement. You're not the body. Because the mental movement is tying you to the body. If somebody is to say, who is J or what is J? The head immediately goes, it's this. It's like this body. This body. And that's where, that re that's where the peace comes from. Is to move away from this yes, no, up, down. Yeah, I need to obtain. I need to get away from. Like it's much more... Life is much more enjoyable and relaxed from that position of, of, uh, yeah, see, neutrality is really the only word I can think of, but the, that's not going to do it because neutrality is a position as well. But uh, you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's not being attached to the movement that's going on. Yeah. That's like the peace. That's where the relief really comes from. There's nothing to get out of and there's nothing to get into. Why? Because you are not the movement that's trying to do that. You see, you're here. You're here as like awareness. As awareness. So we need to see that movement. And then we stop getting pulled this way and that way and this way and that way. I need to become this. I need more of that. Oh, I, got, I have to get away from this. You see? This is the killer. And it's not, it's not looking at the head and going, okay, the head is anxious, yeah? Let's try to change anxiety. No, no, no. You're not the head that is taking itself to be anxious. Like, let's just cut it off at the root. Right? Because trying to alter anxiety, that's like a mental pattern. And now you're trying to alter anxiety as the thing that's identifying as anxiety. That's not going to switch. See that you are not the one claiming to be anxious. <laughs> Anxiety will deter on its own because I'm not living at it as it anymore. So I'm not giving it the fuel that it needs. And then if, if I see that I'm not it and anxiety is really still present, like there's something else going on, then at least I can take care of that from a right position yeah, as not it. Because then I can really work with it. Because getting pulled back and forth by the head and constantly following its cravings and following what it, it's a very uncomfortable way to live. It's very unsustainable. It's exhausting. And it's not yours. That's not your weight to, to take. See? And I know, I know you can identify as that because you... You are under, you're seeing yourself as the head. You, 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 if you're living as the head, which most people are, you understand what I'm talking about. You understand the push and pull and the discomfort that that's happening from. See, because I, I was able to see that.
So I know you're able to see it because I'm not any different than you. Mm. That's the human condition of the mental movement, grabbing and aversion. Mm. And we give it all the fuel it has. You know, because it's very, it's a self-centered, it's a self-centeredness. Self-centeredness. The head, the mental movement is self-centered. So it's always looking, what can I get? And what do I need to get away from for happiness? <laughs> yeah. So we just need to see that that's not the movement we're, that's not us initiating that thought movement. Because as soon as things become mine, as soon as there's a my attached to the things, then there's going to be this discomfort, this need to alter something. Because it's the my that always needs to get in. And I don't see that, I don't see the my that clearly. Like, you know when you're talking to a friend and a friend is like telling you about their problems, and you have all these like awesome resolutions to their problems. You have all these suggestions, yeah. <laughs> but when it's your problem, it's heavily distorted. I can't get out of the problem. I don't know what should I do. How do I? You see, they're just two problems, but one is put. There's a label of my. <laughs> I need to get out of my problem. But if it's your friend's problem, maybe you don't need to get out of it. Maybe you can do this. Maybe you look at it this way. You see, because. You're not taking it to be your problem. So things are much clearer. That's the beauty of the awareness of the beingness. It's always clear. The sky is always clear, no matter what's moving through the sky. So we come to realize that the clarity is already there. It's as, it is what you are. You are that clarity. And then there's the movement. Yeah. <laughs> and it comes from seeing seeing that. Seeing just seeing what you're not. Seeing the movement of the head. And then it's sort of like you just you stop caring about a lot of shit that you thought you cared about. <laughs> because the head is seemingly caring about a lot of things. You know? Not even seemingly, it's the head is caring about a lot of things. But it's caring about a lot of things that it doesn't need to care about, really. It's putting, it's building mountains into molehills. And it's, it's, uh, it's putting a lot of weight into things that are very, very light. You see, like the head is still carrying around things from 20 years ago. Yeah. It's like the head is still like, I'm going to, I got to get that person back for that thing they did to me 25 years ago. <laughs> and I got to get away. I got to get away from the, uh, I got to get away from the shame and the guilt of that thing I did 30 years ago. You see, that's the head carrying that weight. That's not your weight to carry. So see it clearly, at least see that clearly. That the thing you're trying to get into and the thing you're trying to get away from, it's not you who's doing that. And then where does that leave you? It leaves you right here now. And that here now, that clearness, that clarity of seeing here and now is never not here. Yeah. You've always been that. You've never been in the head. It's just that you've been listening to the head. And it may be taking you on a wild ride. It took me on a really wild ride. It took me on a really wild ride. And I never, ever, before I heard this message, even in recovery, you know, like I got sober, now I'm the identi identity of the sober one. And then I'm a yoga teacher, and now the, I'm, I'm the great yoga teacher. I'm the great spiritual leader. I'm the great whatever the head is going to twist. You see? It's not tied to alcoholism. It's tied to the mental movement, self-centeredness. So it didn't just end. It didn't, it didn't end when I put booze down. 
It's more subtle than that. But I never, I never tasted this sort of peace and this level of relief, even in addiction recovery. I'm still in addiction recovery, but I'm saying that from the program, the program was like a step forward towards then hearing that message of non-duality. And also I think being an alcoholic or having heavy depression or anxiety really highlights what you're not. It really fires up the mental system a lot. And it gets so crazy that you, you come to that idea, there's no way I'm doing this because it's too crazy. It's too nuts. The, the, the peace lays in seeing that you're not what is reaching for and you're not what's trying to get away from. That's where the peace lives. It's not trying to alter what's trying to get to. I'm try I need to get I need to get make more money. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna alter that view. No, you're not, really. You're not that much. You may be able to loosen your grip on it a little bit. But if that's a tendency, if that's a mental movement, yeah, to say, oh, I'm gonna completely alleviate that as it in my experience, it's just not going to happen. It's much more It's much more efficient. There's a lot more relief in seeing that you're not what is saying, I'm going to get rich. That's the drop. It's like when the thought patterns that lead toward depression for me, if they come up in the head, Rather than immediately just going, okay, I'm going to change. I'm going to alter that pattern. In my experience, I've been able to chill it out. But to completely alleviate the mental movements that the thought patterns that lead towards, one of them being judgment, the head is always going to be judgmental because it's a function of the head. You see? So it's much more efficient for me to look and see that I'm not the judgment that the judgment is happening as part of the system, the process of the mental movement. That's where the relief comes. And then what happens is judgment actually does drop away really quite a bit because I'm not feeding it. I'm not listening to it. So the head stops. It stops, <laughs> you know, it stops like trying to convince me in a way because it knows that there's just not listening to it. And then, you can sit a lot more in the peace, in the relief, you know, rather than trying to chase it around, trying to alter this. What's wrong with me? Yeah. When we're identified with the head, it's like, well, what's wrong with me? Is this thing going to die? Awesome. What's wrong with me? What, what malfunction do I have? What's my trauma? This and this. Yeah. Look at what is saying that and what's searching for a fix. Where, from where does that arise from? Where is that I, meanness, living in the body? It's not there. It's just movement happening. It's a pattern. yeah. Because the head is trying to identify some, with something. I, I need to be something. Am I a drummer? Am I an alcoholic? Am I a spiritual teacher? Am I uh, is a depressed person? What am I trying? What am I going to identify with? I've got to grab on to something. Trying to alter that is just not going to happen because the head's going to keep trying to identify with it. Well, so what happens when I try to um, alter the pattern of identification? Well, now I'm identified as the one trying to alter the pattern, you see? <laughs> and now I'm just this thing. And now I'm this thing and this thing and this thing. It never stops. It never stops. <laughs> I mean, it's funny when you see it because the head just... It's so insistent, man. It's just like, no, I'm gonna be this thing. I gotta grab onto here and do this. I gotta get away from this, and I gotta change this pattern. And it's just, just see that you're not that movement which is suggesting all of that. That it's just happening. It's just a movement, and that you come before it. You are sitting there as peace as all of this is happening, and then we don't have to live in that discomfort of needing to obtain and needing to get away from. We can put down a lot of the weight that we're seemingly living from because it's not our weight, it's the self. It's identifying as the movement of claiming. 
claiming the whatever the head is coming in contact with, the ownership. See that you're not that claiming and you can drop a ton of weight and live as a just as a general neutrality. It's like, a, I don't know, peace or it's I can't put a name on that is because the words add f too much movement to it. You see, but that's where it lives. That's where the peace lives because you are that peace. And to see that, just see what you're not. Not that movement. There's a thought, not that thought. Because it's just the chasing, even if you're in that noble search of trying to, to better yourself, You're still caught in this push and pull. You're still caught in the, I'm going to get better and I'm going to get away from the things that are making me not good. Who's the one that's trying to do both of those? And who's the one that's claiming they're not peace, beingness, awareness right now? Inquire into that. Inquire into that. And then all this bouncing around of attention that's constantly happening will drop because you see you're not the one doing the bouncing around. So you're no longer feeding it the movement. And then life is, is, is right there. It's happening right now. Nowhere to get to, nothing to get out of because you've never been in the thing that's trying to get elsewhere. That's where I feel like that drop of relief has happened from, at least in my, this humble little life. Yeah. I can stop, I can put down that noble search and I can stop trying to obtain, obtain, obtain all the time. There's nothing to get away from and there's nothing to get into because that movement is not mine. It's just the mental process happening. Yeah. I love that. I love that about this message, the simplicity. It, it's, the simplicity of that is very potent for me. And I hope it's potent for you too because... There is a solution, as they say in recovery. There is a solution. <laughs> and constantly chasing around the mental movement, in my experience, is not the solution. The solution is seeing that you're not that movement. And then there you are. As the thing that you've been looking for the whole time. You've been it. <laughs> Yeah. So it can't find it because you're it. It's it. <laughs>